Did you just start Minecraft for the first time and feel like this? Is this... Is this a cow? What? Are these... What's happening? Have you ever started a Minecraft game and this happened to you? I don't know why I'm flying. Does this game make you feel like this? Uh... Does someone you know play Minecraft and you really just want to know what they're talking about? If you said yes to any of those things, then this video series might be for you. If you've ever done this before, the series might not be for you. Or it might be, who knows? However, if getting started in Minecraft feels completely overwhelming to you, then you're in luck. I am the Blue Regent, and I am here to show you how to get started in Minecraft. Okay, so we're back in our survival island, and the rain has stopped, although now it is nighttime, and so I'm still kind of hiding in the house because I don't want any of these zombies that are out here to mess with me. So while this is still not the most exciting way to spend my time, because I'm in here and they're out there, this is the safest place for me to be right now. Now that the sun is coming up, we're going to wait a little bit longer till everybody catches on fire, and then we're going to head out to build off of everything that we set up days one and two. Again, I can notice that my food is a little low, so I'm going to eat some of my fish. And now that I'm full, that's going to get some of my hearts back. And I can see that that skeleton is on fire, which means that it should be about time for me to head out. I'm just going to wait for him to keel over. See if I can... Yep. And now I'm going to run out of my house just to make sure that no one's waiting right outside. I don't want to look at this tall creature here. That is an Enderman. As long as I don't put my crosshair directly on him, he won't bother me. I'm going to pick up this bone that that skeleton dropped. And it looks like some of our wheat is starting to grow. Cool. Now I'm going to explore the island a little. Because I want to make sure that no creepers are going to sneak up on me. But I also want to see if there are any spiders around. I'm not seeing any spiders. But our searching has taken us to this part of the island where there seems to be some chickens. I'm going to come down here because this little spinning thing right here is a chicken egg. And those are things that I'm going to want for later. So let's see. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch of chickens back here. So I'm going to go around real quick and see if there's any more chicken eggs to pick up. I've picked up six chicken eggs. And that's just from the chickens that are kind of wandering around. They just will occasionally lay eggs. Now I can also get chickens to follow me by having wheat seeds out in my hand. If you notice, they immediately start coming over. And for a certain amount of time, if I walk around, they'll just follow me. And I can get this one to follow me too. Maybe this one. And now I've got all sorts of chicken friends. Another cool thing that I can do with chickens with the wheat seeds is if I right click on two of them, they'll start to kiss and they'll produce, there we go, a baby chicken. So I can actually increase the number of chickens on this island. Now chickens are good because they lay eggs and they also will produce raw chicken if you kill them with either your bare hand or a sword or an ax or something. So if you're low on food and there are chickens around, you can simply kill the chicken, pick up the raw chicken. I can just go around and break a bunch of grass until I have some seeds, and then I can just start to get the chickens to... Oh, these two I've already used. Oh, okay. So they do have a little bit of time before you can have them breed with each other again. So I can kind of just do this over time and just continue to increase the chicken population on my island. This will make sure that I have a source for food if I ever start running low. Or say maybe I'm not near water and I can't rely on just jumping into the ocean for fish. Now I do have this cave over here, so let's check this out real quick. Um, okay, so here's some coal. Oh, there's also some monsters. Okay, so I'm going to light this up as best as I can. I'll use my sword to defend myself. And I kind of want to make sure I'm hitting the zombie and backing up as I go. Because if you notice, things are going to want to keep coming out after me. Now if I can, I'll draw them out into the sunlight where they'll continue to take damage. Oop, and I've been shot by the skeleton. Who doesn't seem to have that much of a problem following me out into the daylight. 
Oh, good, another bone. Um, we'll go in just a little bit. Oh, we don't have more torches. Okay, so this is perfect. I have this area lit up a little bit. I just want to grab some of this coal because if you remember from last episode, we were having to make our coal. So I just want to grab that coal and not look at that enderman and head back out. I'm going to use half of this coal to make some more torches and I'm going to keep the other half of that coal. Now the reason that eggs are so useful is if I scroll over and select eggs, I can right click in a space and I'll actually throw an egg. And sometimes that right, that right there will happen. A baby chicken will be produced. Now that's extremely useful, again, in an area where let's say maybe I only have one or two chickens and I'm really trying to grow my chicken population quickly. Oh, wow, that's, I've never had that good of luck before. Okay. Um, but as you can see, usually the percentage of chickens that are produced from throwing the eggs is pretty low. So between the breeding and throwing eggs, we've increased the amount of chickens that we have around. Breeding is going to stay the main way that I'm going to increase my chicken population. Coming back over here, it looks like two of our wheat are starting to grow even more, which is great. And I want to check out our little cave a little bit more. Now this is where we found our iron, and because we have torches this time, coming down here feels a little bit less scary. So let's just come down a little bit of a ways, just to see what there is to look at. Now this water here does create a current, but I am able to swim against it. So I'm just going to use the water to kind of bring me down a little bit farther. Oh good, more coal. More coal, a little bit more iron. And so this is the end of this cave. So let's gather all this coal and all this iron. So let's gather all of this coal and all of the iron. And we'll have that much more for making tools and things with in the future. Now I'm just going to swim against the current and I can actually press spacebar to have help me swim upstream. Ooh, and it's getting close to nighttime, so I want to get back to our house quickly. Before I run inside, I am going to throw my iron ore in the furnace and then we'll run back inside. Now the reason that I wanted to throw my iron ore in before we came into the house is because iron ore or food that's cooking in a furnace will cook over time. So as long as I'm standing here, all of that is going to continue to process. Now if I had slept overnight, time is not counted as passing if you sleep. So if you have a bed, whenever you go to sleep, however far you are in cooking or smelting, that's where you are when you wake back up, if that makes sense. So the only time at night that cooking or smelting is going to continue to take place is if you stay awake the entire time. Normally, if I had a bed, I wouldn't care about putting the iron in the furnace before coming into the house, but because I don't have a bed, it actually matters. Again, my hunger is getting a little bit low, so I'm going to eat the last of my cod as we wait for daytime. So once again, it's daytime. We're going to come out of our house on high alert because of creepers. And we'll see if we can find any skeleton bones around. So there are two creepers over there. And as long as I just avoid them, I will be fine. Now you may be wondering why finding skeleton bones was so important. If I put a bone in my crafting window here, I can produce three bone meal per bone. Now with the bone meal, if I right click on any plants that I'm growing, it'll advance them at least one stage. So if I right click these two, this is now considered fully grown wheat. So let's see how much farther we can get with this four bone meal. Great, so all of this is now considered fully grown wheat. So I'm just gonna left click punch all of these and I'm actually going to leave these garden spots alone because we're going to move our wheat farm over here by this water. Now the reason that over here by this water is important is because if you remember we talked about before, if I plow a piece of dirt, this actually might be too close. This isn't going to work. If I, plow, <laughs> if I plow a piece of dirt, and we'll come all the way over here because I need to be this far away, it'll eventually just turn back into regular dirt. But 
The same thing will happen actually if I jump on a block that has been plowed. But anytime there is water, I can plow four squares away and this will stay tilled just like this. So we can create a nice little garden plot and this will actually stay tilled unless something jumps on any of these squares. So now I can plant some of these seeds and now we have a much better wheat field over here just like this. Now you may be wondering what can I do with wheat? Well, the simplest thing to do with it, three wheat and any horizontal formation will produce one bread. And bread is a food item. So now that we've got this much larger, much better wheat field set up, we're gonna have a much more efficient food source when it comes to a more of a vegetarian item. So if, if hurting the animals in this game is a thing that bothers you, um, ooh, a bone, great. This is, this is the thing we want. So now we can make some more bone meal with that bone. But if hurting the animals for food is a thing that bothers you in this game, and, you know, plenty of people like to try to play Minecraft without ever hurting any animals, then you don't have to worry because wheat is a perfectly fine food source in the game, and you can just eat bread the entire time. So with some of my extra seeds, I'm just going to kind of go around and breed some more of these chickens to keep increasing our chicken population on the island. More chickens means ultimately more eggs on the island, which ultimately means later on a better food source for me. So now we've got all these chickens running around and you may think to yourself, okay, well, that's great. But what if I have even more seeds than that? Well, I have another trick to show you with extra seeds that is also going to help with this bone meal generation. So if I go to my crafting table, a thing that I can make if I do three planks across is I can get slabs of the same kind. Now a slab is a half a block tall and I can use this kind of as a step. So now I don't have to jump to get to a higher location, which is kind of nice because jumping actually speeds up how fast you lose food. Another thing that I can do with these slabs is make this right here, a composter. Now, if you are finding yourself thinking, I can't remember all of these crafting recipes, that's okay because if you notice this right here, if I left click this, this can show me every single thing that I'm currently capable of making. So if you say, how do I make the composter? I can click on it and it shows me exactly what I need to make a composter. Now, if I come over here by my farm plot and I'll put the composter down and let's say I have some extra seeds laying around. If I just start right clicking into the composter, you can notice this level of brown will start to raise. And every so often, as I right click with seeds, it'll keep going up. And once it's completely full, it will produce bone meal. So now I have a second source of bone meal. So I'll take this bone and we've got four bone meal. So I can actually finish out this little original wheat garden over here and then I'll just take my last two bone meal to get these going and if I don't want to carry these seeds around again they can go in here or I can feed them to my chickens or if I want to one two three four I can keep expanding this wheat field now let's say maybe you aren't on an island and you have plenty of trees around I can also use tree saplings in my composter as well. So that's another use for tree saplings if you find yourself with an abundance of trees around. But I'm just going to keep throwing these seeds in here because I want to make sure that I have plenty of tree saplings for the future. So as the sun is going down again, we're going to head back into our house. Now that we're back inside, we've officially gotten started in Minecraft. We talked a little bit about bread today. We talked about farming wheat more efficiently. We've talked about breeding chickens using seeds. We've also talked about how I can get bone meal from bones and also can use a composter to get rid of things like seeds and unneeded saplings to get more bone meal to speed up the wheat growth. So now at this point, you basically know everything you need to know to get started in Minecraft. With all of these episodes up to this point, this is what you need. 
If you start on an island like this and you don't feel like wading through the nights, that's fine. You can again start a new map until you start in a place where there are sheep nearby. If you don't mind starting like this, there are ways that we can find a bed, and perhaps we'll talk about those in the future. However, you now know essentially everything you need to know to get started and get going and at least start playing around with Minecraft so that it feels a little bit less scary, a little bit less overwhelming, and at the very least, you can talk to your friends and family who do play it and not feel like you have no idea what's going on. If you found these videos helpful and are looking for more information on Minecraft or just want to see some building and exploration, make sure to click the subscribe button and you can see more stuff as it comes out. And I also look forward to putting out more videos on how to expand everything that we've worked on in the future. If you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.